Well, the way we tell the story is to focus on Jean. It's, it is, this is, I would say, the most character-driven, emotional, intimate X-Men movie we've ever done. And it's so centered on Sophie Turner, on Jean's uh, performance, transformation, what happens when she starts to lose control, when something inhabits her, that's sort of forcing her to do things that um, are out of her control. For me, as the writer and the director of the movie, it was just about tracking her emotional journey and then seeing the way that it impacted all of the different people who care about her, who care about her as a lover, in the case of Scott, as a daughter figure, in the case of Charles, as a protege, in the case of Mystique, as a best friend, in the case of Storm. To see these people, the way they're impacted, the way any of us would be impacted if somebody that we loved started to lose control. And in this case, obviously it's losing control to a cosmic force and she has you know, incredible superpowers, but for any of us it could be somebody losing control to drugs or mental health issues or just losing control of their temper. In this case, when she loses control of her temper, you know, a whole city could be uh, knocked out. But at the core, it is just this following Gene's story beat by beat, and it was something that, um, you know, Hutch is extraordinary uh, at keeping me honest about character trajectories. And Sophie was inc an incredible partner in, in, in sort of navigating that with me every beat of the script. Well, what I learned uh, from doing the Dark Phoenix story the first time, um, and we brought to this one, was to actually do the Dark Phoenix story. On uh, X-Men Last Stand, uh, there's a lot of things I think that you know I'm proud of as the writer, co-writer of that movie, but it wasn't really the Dark Phoenix story. That Dark Phoenix story was relegated to being the secondary plot of that film, and the primary plot was the Cure story. There's so many more sophisticated, nuanced, ambiguous movies now in the superhero genre. Back then, it was like just heroes and villains. So I think now maybe the world's more ready than it was then. Uh, and that's the biggest thing we brought to this movie was focusing on Jean's story of becoming Phoenix, Dark Phoenix, and the effect it had on the X-Men. And that's the plot. To me, what makes them so iconic is, is how innately complex they are. You know, and I don't think we've always um, explored that as successfully as we could. But part of what excited me most about Dark Phoenix and Simon's desire to tell the story and, and tell it differently was that we would get to do that work now and get to see behind the facade of Charles and actually see into the complexity of what it is to be a parent and be responsible and, and have to take responsibility for decisions and choices maybe made with the best of intentions but not necessarily um, with the best results. To Simon's credit, I think he really took the time in this to, to delve into each of the characters, as he mm. described, in their unique relationship to the core problem, which is Gene, and, and to, to dramatize that. For me, it's the key because action is only as interesting to me as it is emotional, and as it is a, a vehicle for character. When action and spectacle come hand in hand with those values, I think is when I enjoy films the most. Um, and that was the opportunity and the, the challenge of this. I've always had thoughts about where the X-Men could go when we're making these movies. There's tons of X-Men stories that I love from the comics that you know haven't been mined yet in, in cinema. So yeah, I've got lots of ideas, but it's not something that I tend to think about while I'm in the midst of making an X-Men movie. I'm not thinking about the next one, I'm thinking about making this one, completing it, and making it as good as it can possibly be. And one way we approached this movie, um, well before there was any um, talk or even thought of, of Disney um, acquiring Fox, even back then we were thinking about the movie as, in many ways, the culmination of this particular run of X-Men films, because it felt as though when you get to the Dark Phoenix story, being the most iconic, the most powerful of X-Men stories, you need to earn your way into Dark Phoenix. You need to earn your way there where the audience feels as though they've lived with this family for long enough that the dissolution of that family means something to them. And so to get all the way there, to actually care enough after really 20 years of making these movies, but 10 years of making the movies with this, primarily with this X-Men First Class cast, this notion that the family would be challenged, it would fall apart, and ultimately potentially come back together, felt like the culmination of something. And so, you know, I didn't think about what the next X-Men movie was because I felt like this was the ultimate X-Men movie. Um, and now we'll see what the next X-Men movie is. We made a conscious choice not to make it a commentary on the times, you know, not, not in any specific way. Not to, to frankly distract from the emotional storytelling with uh, those sort of winks. It really is an attempt to get closer and deeper into the world of these characters. It felt distracting to potentially 
you know, stop, stop that effort to, to go look over here. And um, so we chose not to. One of the things that we didn't do in X-Men, um, The Last Stand, and was really important to me for this telling of the Dark Phoenix story is to bring in an interstellar alien element. Obviously, that's a huge part of the original saga in the comics, um, and it was something that it was always cool to me. And the challenge was bringing that in in a way that felt grounded and real and organic, uh, like the rest of this movie feels. And in a movie that's this character-based and this emotional and intimate, to not make it feel as though it sort of blew up the movie. And so, there is an alien threat. Jessica Chastain is, is an alien from another planet that's come here for this cosmic force, which itself is interstellar. Plays out in the movie, and you see, uh, you know, scenes in space. She, you see uh, Jessica Chastain in alien form. They talk about what this cosmic force is and what it's done around the galaxy and other galaxies. But it never becomes so much the focal point of the movie that it takes away from the emotional thrust of the film, which is really about Jean losing control and the people that she loves sort of falling apart because of it. And what Jessica's character represents, really, um, is this sort of temptation of the Phoenix side of Jean, the cosmic side of Jean, to shed her relationships with the people that she loves here on Earth and to more follow the path of that cosmic, um, sort of out of control Phoenix thing that's taking her over. I, I read somewhere uh, Chris Claremont recently talking about um, that the Dark Phoenix story for him was so, so resonant for people because it was someone making a decision between their morality and temptation. And that that is something that goes back to the Bible. It is something that every one of us probably grapples with every day in one form or another. And she's doing it in this cosmic, massive scale, but it still boils down to a dilemma that all of us know and understand. And so balancing the cosmic and the human, um, the sort of intergalactic and the intimate, uh, was really the challenge of the movie. There's so many because like, I. <laughs> I always feel like when I when I call out artists um, from the I'm like forgetting so many. It's like when people give Oscar speeches and they forget to thank their wife. So, but you know, I, I really I'd say I mostly looked at the, the original Dark Phoenix run for some of the inspiration, and then I also looked at some of the Grant Morrison stuff that for me has been my favorite um, over recent years. Uh, so there's elements of those two um, sort of uh, iterations of the X Men in here. And then there's also something else that you know I wanted to do with this film is make it feel real and gritty and grounded and contemporary in a way that I would say in some ways it was inspired by what Jim Mangle did with Logan. Um, Hutch and I were the producers of Logan. Hutch was really the, the, the primary on the ground to like really running that movie producer. And I just loved the way that film um, was so emotionally resonant and it had winks and, and touches of the comics and this movie certainly has a lot more of the comics ingrained in it. Um, I think I'm more of a comic book fan than Mangold is. Jim would be the first person to tell you that. But I tried to bring in those other sources while also making it its own um, unique and real thing.